Mitsuru Kusimoto plunged himself into a coma, sealing his fate alongside Kuwana's. Ridden by guilt, Kuwana sets off on a path of vengeance, and the bullies he drags with him are shackled to the shadows. However, Yokosawa's murder serves as a deadly wake-up call to what he's done. Getting your identification on record, so you won't be a threat to us anymore? Uh, what? And I think you owe us after everything you've done. Expect me to come collect one of these days. <sighs> your carriage awaits, Mamiya-san. Don't tell me we're going back to that dingy arcade. <laughs> we sure are. But try not to hold a grudge. It wasn't us who abandoned you. <sighs> Yagashi, you already called Sari-san and the gang, right? Yeah. I let them know what's up. They said they'll head over when they're ready. Did Shirasaki sensei say anything? <laughs> well... She was pretty stunned when I told her who Kuwana really is, and what he's up to. Sounding a little smug there, Higashi-san. Taking credit for the detective work you didn't even do? Back me up here, Yagami-san. Whatever, man. Kuwana got away, and that's all that matters. Still, the task in front of us is finishing Sari-san's case. We have to clear up Ahara's crime once and for all. With Mamiya-san's help, of course. <sighs> Finally. I'm ready to get some answers. Well, we still got time till Shirosaki sensei gets here. Why don't you take a breather, Yagami-san? Huh? That'd be okay? Sure. I'll call you once everyone's here. Yeah. A break sounds good. By the way, Higashi, has anything unusual gone down in Kamrat Show lately? Anything involving RK? Yeah, about that. My guys are saying things have been a little too quiet since yesterday. Soma and Akutsu are out in Ijincho, too. When they come back, they're in for a rude awakening. I'll make them pay for what they did to Kaito Aniki. Make them pay? Aren't your Yakuza days behind you now? That's not the Yakuza in me talking. That's just a problem I'm gonna be the solution for. Uh, isn't that exactly what a Yakuza would say? Fine. Think of it as getting revenge for a brother. Uh... I'm doing the right thing, damn it! Yeah, maybe it's just how you're putting it. Besides, what's the matter if I was Yakuza? I've got my own code, and I'm gonna do right by me. Whatever you say. Much as things change, they stay the same. Warmer.
Here we go. Bingo. Hey. Shirosaki sensei and the others just got to Charles. They're getting ready to grill Mamiya san. Got it. Then I'll head back soon. Thanks. You too, Genda Sensei? What? Am I in the way? <laughs> of course not. I didn't know you still did field work. I figured if they could pull a fast one on Saurikun, I'd at least want to look him in the eye. Why are all these people here? What gives? We've been waiting for you, Yagami-san. Mamiya-san is about to enlighten us on the truth behind the groping. Good. Oh, and I heard about Sawa-sensei. I'm so sorry. Our condolences. Looks like she got mixed up in all this when R.K. was chasing after Kawana. But we're still not sure why they chased him. To figure that out, we'll have to retrace Kawana's steps. Exactly. That said, let's start with the harassment charges, Mamiya-san. <sighs> Fine. Let's get this over with. Pout all you want, but keep the answers straight. Got it? <laughs> Ahara's assault was designed to establish a false alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. So Kawana had you play the victim, and together you pulled one over on the police and the court. Can you confirm if this is all accurate so far, please? Yeah, yeah. The person who groped you on the train wasn't Ahara's on himself. It was his stand-in. And my understanding is that he had conspirators to help him fabricate this event? That's right. What was Kawana doing at the time? Was he in Ijinsho or Tokyo? Didn't you hear your lady friend? A Harasan had a stand-in. And that stand-in was our sensei. You mean Kawana posed as Ahara himself? So this Ahara was actually Kawana. Huh. Sensei and Ehara-san have a pretty similar build. Not sure they could have pulled it off otherwise, you know? But some spots don't look right, like his mouth. You sure that's really Kawana-san? That part around his mouth is fake. He said he scanned Ehara-san's face and made it on a 3D printer. Oh, huh. You can print things in 3D now? Well, it's a machine that takes a model's data from a computer and prints physical objects using materials like resin. So if you were to scan a person's face onto a computer, a 3D printer could accurately recreate it. Hmm. I don't know the details, but that's what Sensei used to become a Harasan. Something like this? See, with a 3D printer, a piece of a face is pretty easy to make. What the hell? I see. 
His eyes are hidden behind the sunglasses, and the seams on his jaw are obscured by the mask. It's incredible, I must say. With the mouth area so visible, it's too convincing to think he's anybody else. And with the prosecution assuming he's just another sexual predator, they fell for it. This is no time to be impressed. In case you forgot, he had the defense fooled too. Uh -huh. uh, right. Assuming Kawana was Ahara's double, there's still some evidence I'm iffy about. I'm of the same opinion. Okay, which evidence is questionable? How about this, then? What's this? A map of the station? We made a diagram of Shinjuku Station. The platform's packed with cameras, but take a closer look and you'll notice a small blind spot. We've all been looking into it. So, let's say Ahara murdered Mikoshiba and faked his alibi at the station. If that was the case, then after Ahara had his stand and do the deed, they would have swapped at this blind spot. <laughs> Sound about right. Is I give up what you're looking for? You figured it out. You win. What more do you want? This came out pretty clearly. Uh-huh. So the guy in the back is Kuana posing as Ahara, right? Yes. And he actually didn't lay a finger on me. His prints couldn't show up. Sounds like you had a hell of a time getting this set up. I didn't. But Sensei sure did. Can you take a closer look at this? That's the Ikebukuro station platform. What about it? If Kawano was pretending to be Ahara, then Kawano was also the man in the video before he got on the train, correct? Right. Didn't we go over this already? Uh, guess we did, huh? How about this, then? And this is? Before the incident, Ahara used this card to go through the ticket gate at Ikebukuro, the time of which was recorded. Right, and it was on October 7th at 7.43 a.m. Thanks, Hoshino-kun. Happy to help, Yagami-san. At the earliest, Mikoshiba's time of death would have been 7.30 a.m. If Ahara killed Mikoshiba in Ijinsho, he would have only had 13 minutes to get to Ikebukuro. And frankly, that's impossible. <laughs> that's what's dumping you? Huh? Sensei borrowed the card from Ahara-san beforehand and passed through the gate. Afterward, he slipped it back to Ahara-san when they switched places. That way... Ihara-san ended up having the time-stamped card on him. Makes sense now. So even the entry time through the ticket gate was used as part of the alibi? It all seems so obvious now that I hear it. Nobody'd suspect that a groping was being used as an alibi for murder. Yeah. And on top of all that, no one knew Mikoshiba had been killed during the trial. They really pulled it off. Anything else? This piece of the puzzle still needs an explanation. Is that... A... The police examined the trace evidence on Ahara's hands after he was caught. And from the analysis, the same fibers from Mamiya-san's undergarments were found on Ahara's hands. That's right. If the stand-in was the groper, Ahara-san wouldn't have touched Mamiya-san at all. But the evidence on Ahara-san's hands suggests otherwise. Rather strange, isn't it? I take it there was a trick to this, too? That simple. Before I got in the train, I met with the real Ahara-san at the underground platform. That's when I had him touch the undergarment. After that, all I had to do was go to the bathroom and put them on. That's where the fibers in the trace were from. What the police found on Ahara-san's hands was exactly what we wanted them to find and it would serve as hard proof he grabbed me. The cords really ate it up. It was hard not to laugh sometimes, to be honest. 
You're really starting to open up. That's the spirit. <laughs> How should we be looking at this? The guy getting taken down in the footage is the Rayleigh Harrison. Sensei had already switched places with them before the scene happened. No one saw through his disguise. Makes sense. There'd be no way to swap places after getting caught like this. His sunglasses were removed too. Also, the person who tripped him was one of ours. So was the one who took the smartphone video. If nobody tried to stop him, he would have just gotten away. But the most important part of it was pinning a Harasan as the culprit out in public. Right. If that didn't happen, the entire alibi goes up in smoke. More or less. So basically, this entire battery case was calculated from the start. Nothing but smoke and mirrors. What do you make of this? I mean, what's there to doubt? Uh, you tell me? The one running on the platform wasn't a Harrison. It was Sensei pretending to be him, right? Meaning... There is no more meaning. That's all there is to it. A Harrison used a stand-in to fake his alibi. The stand-in turned out to be none other than Jin Kuana, which Mamiya-san just finished explaining in detail. Yep. Good to know we have all our ducks in a row. Any thoughts after seeing this? Stop it. You're gonna look away? You aided and abetted by playing the victim, didn't you? I mean, yes. Who put this video up on the internet? Sensei did. He said from the start that once Ehara-san got his guilty verdict, he'd upload it to the internet. So that was all part of the plan. Yeah. Sensei can't forgive the law for how easy it lets off bullies. Ehara-san's the same way. His son's death was brushed aside. The court blamed his suicide on unknown factors. And that's what led them to his whole plan. The real victim is some bully who never got what he deserved, and the killer gets off in court by being convicted of battery. How would the public respond after finding out they'd gamed the law like that? So Kawana and Ahara's real plan was to make a mockery out of the justice system. <sighs> Seems to be going well for them. The courts are beside themselves for dragging the police into this. I guess Ahara really was desperate. He was never concerned about his own punishment. He tarnished his own name to humiliate the law. Yeah, cop or not, Ahara is a broken man. Nobody took responsibility for his son's death. The courts all but ignored his case. No wonder he went along with Kawana. I can't even imagine. Yeah. Sensei and Ahara's son are the perfect pair with nothing to lose. The only ones who do? the ones forced to comply. Us. Speaking of which, are we done here yet? Yagami-san, you sure that's enough? Yeah, I think we've got plenty. Bottom line, groping was a fabrication. At the very least, we know that the prosecution's evidence can all be refuted. The courts were being intentionally misled. I'm considering filing an appeal. Are you saying you want a retrial? I am. We'll reveal Ahara and Kawana's plot and overturn the verdict they issued. Hmm. That might be harder than it sounds. Why do you say that, Kanda-sensei? Well, the previous trial resulted in Ahara being found guilty, right? As the client, if he doesn't want an appeal, there's no way you're getting one. Doesn't matter what any lawyer tries to do. If Ahara refuses to appeal, then that's that. And we'll talk to him tomorrow. First, we need to see how he reacts to everything we've got on him. Sounds good. Then let's meet at the detention center tomorrow. Will do. So, we done for the night? Sure are. Great job, everyone. 
Go get some rest. Yo, Yagami. You sure it was cool to let that Mamiya chick just go home? Yeah, why? I mean, she helped Kuwana kill all those people. Aren't you gonna turn her in or something? I would. There's nothing we can do. <sighs> nothing we can do? Frankly, we don't have any proof of the murder she was talking about. What, so this is all for nothing? Nothing directly pointing to Mamiya, anyway. Aside from Mikoshiba, no other bodies turned up. Which means all we can do is take her home, right? Sugira is making sure she gets back safe. <sighs> Fine, forget it. Why are you still here? Everyone else went home already. Come on, man, why the cold shoulder? Am I really that annoying? You wouldn't be the guy I'd call to hang out with. So if you're done, then go. Wow, straight for the jugular, huh? But if it's help you need, I'll be there. I've had nothing but time lately. But only if you bow your head and ask nice. Then I'll consider it. <laughs> I know for a fact you'd help me out regardless, so why waste a good bow? Thanks for the drink. Dude, come on. That was your cue to bow and ask nice. So, you're recommending an appeal? I have that right? Did some new evidence come to light? Yui Mamiya told us some things. Like how you faked your alibi for Mikoshiba's murder. You wanted the sexual battery conviction, right? Well... Your goal was to avenge your son and humiliate the law on a grand scale. I have no idea what you're talking about. Ahara-san, we have a much better grasp of the situation than you think. And what exactly have you grasped? Like Yagami-san just said, you're innocent. As far as the harassment goes. As your lawyer, I'll file for an appeal. And we'll make sure the world knows it. Thanks, but no. I'm scum of the earth. A pervert. The prosecution and the judge made that very clear in the verdict. On the day of the crime, October 7th, at around 6.30 a.m., you were in Ijincho, not Tokyo. <laughs> Baloney. I was relaxing at home. Except that you weren't. Oh? You wanted to give the man who pushed your son to suicide the beating of a lifetime. And you'd miss out on that opportunity if you were at home, which is why you were in Ijincho instead. Isn't that right? You and Kawana's former student staked out Mikoshiba's house until he left. Then you dragged your prey into a car and brought him to an abandoned building in a Jinsho, which would later become a murder scene. 
Every bone on Mikashiba's fingers was broken. Remembering how he pushed Toshiro-kun to his death, it's no wonder you'd go that far. You tortured Mikoshiba without a shred of remorse. You inflicted no small amount of pain and terror. There's no way you weren't there, and I'd put my money on that. And then... You need the whole play-by-play, -play, even though you already know it? Oh, not at all. I'm just fascinated by this outrageous little story. As for what you did next after beating Mikoshiba... <sighs> okay, and... What exactly is the point of showing this to me? Uh, hang on. That wasn't what I meant to pull out. <laughs> Was it, though? Pull yourself together and press on. As for what you did next after beating Mikoshiba... It's <laughs> quite a home video. Without leaving anything on Mikoshiba's body that could be traced back to you, you slid his throat. Estimated time of death was around 7.30 a.m. on October 7th. You tossed the bloody coat and made your way to Ikebukuro Station, where Yui Mamiya was waiting. Are you sure? I was at Ikebukuro by 7.30 a.m. Would have been impossible for me to kill Mikoshiba and Ijinsho. The person in the security camera footage in Ikebukuro was a double who imitated your likeness. The identity of whom belonged to Jin Kuwana, the handyman in Ijinsho. Or maybe you know him by a different name. Former high school teacher Yu Kitakata. So which name did he give you? I don't know who you're talking about. With Kuwana in view of the security camera, you met up with Yui Mamiya at Ikebukuro first. That's where you touched the undergarments she had prepared. The police would later discover the trace evidence on your hands and pin the groping on you. Then you made your way to Shinjuku Station. After that, Mamiya and Kuwana acted out the groping as they arrived at Shinjuku Station. Kuwana jumped out of the train and Mamiya chased after him. And then, in the smallest of blind spots in a station absolutely packed with cameras, you were waiting for Kuwana, who looked just like you. With the two of you matching, you were able to swap places in that huge crowd without anyone noticing. Kuana handed you the transit card used to pass the ticket gate. Just one piece of hard evidence that places you and Ikebukuro at 7.43 a.m. And right after the swap, Mamiya started calling for help. After that, well, we've all seen how the news reported it. You were caught in a public place with plenty of witnesses. An active duty police officer arrested for sexual battery, the public outcry was very clear. As a result, despite it being your first offense, you were actually tried and convicted. The consensus is that it was a fitting punishment for someone so heinous. Even as your lawyer, I felt the same. Have some confidence in yourself, Shirosaki sensei The prosecution, the judge, and a lawyer like you all laid out the evidence in court and found me guilty. I'm in no position to doubt you. And I've long accepted the ruling that Toshiro was never bullied. There's nothing I can do but abide by the rule of law. Right? That's all I can do, right? I know what you're trying to say. You carried out the justice that the courts wouldn't, right? Everything my son went through was passed off like it never even happened. School, the teachers, and yes, the court. They all dismissed the reason he died. That's when Kawana came in the picture, telling you Toshiro-kun had been bullied. But was it Kawana's words that suddenly made you want to kill Mikoshiba? Because all of his fingers were broken while he was still alive. 
Was that really all just your pent-up rage? What do you have to say, Tahara-san? Did Toshiro-kun ever tell you about the bullying himself? My son never confided in me about any of that. Then how did you know there was bullying going on? Why else would you murder Mikoshiba in cold blood? Was Sawa-sensei the one who told you the truth? She was the only person Toshiro-kun confided in. You had to have heard it from her, right? Nearly hit the nail on the head, as they say. Nearly? After my trial, she confessed she knew about the bullying. But only to her old teacher over the phone. She had no idea she was being recorded. What? Kuanasan let me listen to that recording where I learned Sawa Sensei had been muzzled by both the homeroom teacher and the lawyer. That was the proof of Toshiro's bullying I'd wanted all throughout the trial. After hearing Sawa-sensei's words, I finally understood. They pushed my boy over the edge. Was there no other evidence of the bullying? Like a diary of Toshiro-kun's, or something of the sort? Nothing. Toshiro never talked to me or my wife about the bullying. And that was probably all my fault. He was bullied in middle school, too. Kids would throw his pencil case around or hide his books. When I heard about it, I chewed him out. They walk all over you because you're weak. Grow spying, I told him. I take it that was the wrong approach. Yeah. <sighs> I can't imagine how much courage it took for him to come forward about his suffering. I'm sure he felt ashamed about it. And I should have listened when he pleaded for help. I should have told him I was proud of his bravery. But instead, I pushed him away. And in the end, Toshiro tried to make sure he never showed weakness to us again. No matter how much pain he was in. He went to a private school out in Yokohama because he hated living with me. But in the end, he still suffered. And that's why you didn't hesitate to unleash hell on Mikoshiba. If you say so. So the first time Kawana showed up was when he let you listen to the phone call with Sawa-sensei, right? Yes. He approached me and asked me if I still wanted justice for my son. I was in uniform when he came to me too. Very bold. But it paid off. I owe him a debt of gratitude. He reassured me he had already taken care of multiple individuals like Goshiba. And that he'd urged other families to avenge the children they lost to bullying. He'd tell them that simply being branded a bully wasn't enough. He promised to deliver real justice. If justice can be served at one's own discretion, laws would cease to serve their function. If the law isn't fair to everyone, no one will obey it. The law is only able to help the powerless because it can't be swayed by money, force, or anything else. Then tell me. What's the solution when the law fails to punish someone who laughs in its face? To overlook those the law won't judge is to abandon those the law couldn't protect. To render justice with confidence, you require sufficient evidence. Some of the victims' families refused Kuana's offer of revenge, telling him it would be unforgivable. But even after rejecting his offer, not a one reported Kuangasan to the police. Do you understand what that implies? 
whether you follow through with revenge or not, Kuanasan presents a solution that resonates with people. Being that the law is unfair and imperfect, am I wrong about that? No, you're not. But we're fighting to make it as fair as we can. Laws have to change until they are perfect. They don't change fast enough. Toshiro's death was murder by another name. Yet, Hiromi Kushiba walked free. He even got to enroll in a teaching program as a student teacher. Someone like him? It's insane! I'd die of old age before the law was ever written to be fair enough. For Toshiro's sake, I can't turn a blind eye to a world where the Mikoshibas can live without consequence. Tell me, what alternative was there to getting blood on my hands? I didn't have any other choice! Yagami-san, did he just...? This is the first time you've admitted to killing Mikoshiba. You really did your research, unlike those useless cops. Wanasan's plan was impressive, almost airtight. I didn't expect it to be unraveled so quickly. I just got lucky. There was some dirt on Yui Mamiya that Kawana could have used against her. If we hadn't found it, there's no way we would have gotten her to talk. What are you talking about? <laughs> Sorry, but I'm under no obligation to tell you. Ahara-san, you'll be sent to prison as a sex offender as it stands. Of course. Just as I planned. The charges will be confirmed, and I'll be convicted. As for the police and the prosecution, they wouldn't be able to admit they made a mistake. I could scream, I killed Mikoshiba at the top of my lungs. It wouldn't matter. Are you saying you intend to admit to the murder after you're released? <laughs> Everyone's seen the video of me killing Mikoshiba by now. It's obviously authentic, but the prosecution and the police are saying it's fake. They need it to be fake. Even if I do confess, they'll sweep it under the rug. <sighs> they wouldn't. No, that's not beneath them. But I take it how they react doesn't really matter to you. All you want is to humiliate the law, don't you? The same system that determined Toshiro-kun's incident didn't happen. It seems you're starting to understand, Yagami-sa. The prosecution wanted to charge me for Mikoshiba's murder. Then they'd have to retract the battery verdict. And that would mean admitting to a massive blunder by the court at the hands of a criminal. It would be chaos. Despite knowing who murdered Mikoshiba, no one would know what to make of the case. Wouldn't that just be wonderful? I hear you. And I even get why you'd feel pretty proud of accomplishing that. Do you? But in this case, the guys pretty much grabbed the tiger by the tail. What tiger's tail? Someone's issuing orders to the thugs and Kamurocho from behind the scenes. He's the tiger in this case. And they've been closing in on your partner, Kawana. And Sawa Sensei got in their path. I'm sure you get the newspaper in here, right? You know, don't you? Sawa Sensei was killed after the thugs broke into her home. All because she got involved with Kawana. I'm aware she was killed. This is the first I'm hearing of the reason why. And by thugs, you mean RK? Yeah, but we don't know why they're going after Kawana. Any ideas? No way I'd know. You think it could be because she got mixed up in your deadly little game? Excuse me? That's what getting away with murder really looks like. The more you perpetuate the lie, the greater the rift you create. And then... The unthinkable happens. Kawana killed others besides Mikoshiba. You said so yourself. That's what brought the angry tiger into play. And if Sawa-sensei ended up paying for that instead, then how can you begin to believe your vengeance is fair? Because she gave false testimony. 
She lied in court to say Toshiro was never bullied. She couldn't name Mikoshiba, who was a minor at the time, without evidence. What's more, she was haunted by her testimony, always second-guessing if she did the right thing. But now she's been killed. Somehow that's acceptable to you? I'm gonna clear up what happened to Sawa-sensei, just like you did for Toshiroku. How? Oh. By going public with everything you and Kawana did. The first step is to appeal the sexual battery and undo this whole lie. You never groped you, Imamiya. That's one crime you're innocent of, Ehara-san. The court's verdict was incorrect. So please give us the chance to appeal. We can prove your innocence. What on earth would I get out of that? You get to humiliate the court again. Besides, what are you going to do for the next half a year in a cell? Fine. Do what you want. But just know this. Yes? I have no intention of admitting to killing Mikoshiba in court. Is your appeal still worth a damn? We won't know till we try. Let's go, Sari-san. We have client approval to proceed with the appeal. We better act fast. Yes, agreed. Yagami-san. Sawa-sensei's death isn't on me. Even if I have grabbed the tiger by the tail, that doesn't mean I killed her. By that logic, you may as well admit that Mikoshiba didn't kill Toshiroku. You can't have it both ways. Listen to me. Everything about you, about Kuwana, about why Sawa-sensei had to die, we're gonna expose all of it. That's the only thing left we can do for her. I'm going to fill Genda-sensei in on what happened. Why don't you head over to the office? Sure thing. So then, Ihara admitted to killing Mikashiba, did he? Off the record, yeah. He also admitted Kawana approached him to offer revenge. That sounds like you were productive. It's enough for us to move forward with the appeal, I'd say. How does that sound, Genda-sensei? Uh, Genda-sensei? The sexual battery and Mikoshiba's murder are the very same case. To clear Ahara of harassment, you'll need to prove he murdered Mikoshiba. But you don't have evidence he did, do you? Ahara-san was captured on video committing the murder. And the prosecution claims it's a fake of unknown origins. The police are saying the same. They're only saying that to cover their asses. In reality, the sexual battery evidence against Ahara-san is what was really fake. At the very least, we can claim Yui Mamiya and the others aided in fabricating that, alibi or not. You really think the courts will grant you an appeal for just that? Are you saying that's not possible? I wouldn't go that far. But Ehara won't admit to murdering Mikoshiba in court. Kind of significant, don't you think? So what chance do you have even if you do appeal? Without any decisive new evidence, you'll just end up splitting hairs over the original verdict. And what good'll it do other than damage your own reputation, Sarukun? To be honest with you, I feel like I've been deeply underestimated. What? Sorry, son. Are you actually mad? Yes. As a matter of fact, I am. You have every right to be. Listen, Sensei. Ehara and Kuwana devised this plan knowing full well they could manipulate the justice system. Have we not fallen right into their trap? If we take pity on the prosecution now, we play right into their hand. True. So how can we worry about reputation when our duty as lawyers is to face the law? I understand where you're coming from, and you're right to think it, but... And another thing. While acting as Ahara's defense in the first trial, I never truly believed the claim. 
I didn't trust the person I was defending, and I felt sick to my stomach even being in the courtroom. Sorry, son. Hara likely saw right through that. He probably took great delight in our myopic dedication to the law. And I won't stand for that. I'm gonna show him exactly what I can do. Hmm, what about you, Yagami? I want to hear your thoughts. We should listen to Sari-san. I understand why Ahara and Kawana did what they did. I can't condone it. I see. So you feel it too, huh? Yes. Although my motivation may not be as righteous as Sari-san's. Hmm, what do you mean? Mikoshiba's murder, the fake groping alibi. The one behind it all was Kawana, and he's in hiding. We need to shine enough light on him that the public can see what he is. And the perfect place to do it is during Ahara's appeal hearing. So it's not Ahara you're after, but Kawana. If we pursue Ahara's case, Kawana-san's actions will naturally come to light. And if we draw out Kawana, then RK and the ones backing them will make their move. Soma from RK said Sawa Sensei knew too much. Which means whoever's behind them has a secret that needs to stay buried, even if it means murder. And I need to figure that secret out. I owe Sawa Sensei that closure. The only thing we can do for her now is make sure the ones pulling the strings pay for it. Well said. I guess going back wasn't ever really an option. Kenda Sensei. Looks like I got complacent from all the peace and quiet. Leave it to me to underestimate the younger generation. I apologize. I shouldn't have been so impertinent. Mm, that should be my line, Sarikun. I suppose I have to make up my mind after all that, don't I? Get out there and do what needs to be done. And heaven help anyone in your way. Yeah. Right. Yep. You heard him. Hello? Yagamishi, are you still in Kamurocho? Yeah, why? What's up? I'm afraid RK seems to be amassing in Ijincho. It's very bizarre. Are they now? Yeah, and I can't shake the feeling that the officers like Soma and Akutsu are still in town. You think so? If I was Soma, I'd have left Ijinsho by now. He's a person of interest in Sawa Sensei's murder, too. I see. That does make sense. Things are settling into place here, though. I'm heading back to Ijinsho with Sugiura. We got a lot to go over with you when I get back. <laughs> Wonder what it could be. Okay, see you soon then. Yeah, let's go. Really, guys?
Well, now that's something. Looks like we're finally starting to see the whole picture. Kuwana-san, or rather Kitakata-sensei, huh? And his students helped Ihara murder Mikoshiba. But there's still some things that doesn't explain. Like what? Like why does RK keep going after Kuwana-san? You think that's weird too, right, Yagami-san? Yeah. That's the piece of the puzzle that'll lead us to why Sawa-sensei got killed. Before they came to Ijinsho, RK was originally looking for Shinya Kawai. But when they found out he might have been killed, they suddenly shifted gears to Kawana. So what are they trying to accomplish? We can guess all we want, but that's not gonna get us anywhere. Shouldn't we ask someone in RK directly? They're strengthening their numbers in Ijinsho as we speak. The coons at the bottom rung aren't gonna be in the know on that, though. Though if Akatsu or Soma were around, then we might get somewhere. That's true. Sitting around here won't get us any further. I'm gonna head into the city for a bit. I'm quick on my feet. That's about all I have going for me right now. <laughs> How modest of you. Yeah, don't say that, Yagamishi. Otherwise, what ground do we have to stand on? Hello? It's Shirosaki. Do you have a minute, Yagami-san? Yeah, what's up? I was thinking back on our interview with Ihara-san, and something he said isn't sitting right with me. So I wanted to ask your opinion. Which part felt off? The part about Kuwana approaching other bullying victims besides Ihara-san to offer revenge. Ihara-san also mentioned that most of them rejected his offer, but never went to the police either. Yeah, and? Well, wasn't the first bully Kuwana killed his own student? Shinya Kawai, I mean. Tormented by his bullies, Mitsuru Kusumoto's leap left him in a coma to this day. That event was the catalyst for Kuwana's actions, so wouldn't he have approached his parents about revenge too? Mitsuru Kusumoto's parents? You're talking about his mother, Reiko Kusumoto, right? Yes, who is currently Vice Minister of the Ministry of Health. If she accepted or is even an accessory to a revenge plot against Kawhi, then... There's no way she'd ever want that secret to get out. With her level of influence and power, wouldn't it be possible that she ordered RK to silence Kawana? Which would explain how RK's actions are being controlled, wouldn't it? And you think it's Reiko Kusumoto? You don't think vice ministers can control criminal organizations from the shadows? You know very well the answer to that. Yeah. Tsukumo's actually looked into her before. I'll talk to him about it right now. Yeah, this is genius, Sari-san. This could lead us right to who's controlling RK. Quite a compliment coming from you. I feel better already. <laughs> don't sweat it. I'll call you if I find anything out. <laughs> 